Today, I really wanted to give you guys an update on this paludarium and the incredibly special animals that live inside of it. Today, we're going to be doing an update on my Shinisaurus crocodilurus, which are the Chinese crocodile lizards. And these animals are arguably some of the rarest I own in my home. That's not something I'm necessarily proud of. It's not something I want to say the same. And it's why I put an incredible amount of pressure on myself to reproduce them. I want them to be abundant. I want there to be no shortage of these animals in Canada for people to enjoy and learn about. And it's why it can be really stressful that in the few years that I've owned them, I haven't been able to reproduce them yet. Today I wanted to do this update. I wanted to show you how Rexy, my male that I haven't named, and the other female that I still haven't named are doing. They're really doing well. Nothing is wrong with them, rest assured. However, it's been tricky. I wanted to show you what's been going on with the animals, why I think they haven't reproduced yet, what I'm planning to do going into another winter cycle in hopes that next spring might be the year. So if you're interested in learning about my experience keeping Shinisaurus crocodilurus, consider watching the video, and I thank you for tuning in. Let's get into it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion, and you're watching Reptiliatus channel. If you enjoy videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post one to two videos a week, as well as several YouTube shorts. So friends, Shinisaurus are a treat and a true blessing to be able to own and work with. I don't take any moment with these animals for granted. They're so unique. They come from a monotypic genus, naturally as such, the only species that is part of that genus. And they come from a larger clade called Shinisaura, which dates back to the Cretaceous period. So you can imagine how cool these animals are. They look so prehistoric, they're dinosaur-like, and they're from these mountainous, cool ranges in Southeast China and their range can be found down into one population that's some 500 kilometers away from the Chinese region in northeastern Vietnam. This species is dwindling primarily due to deforestation and overharvesting. So these animals are not doing well. Thankfully, there are conservation and breeding efforts in China and Vietnam. From what I understand, the Chinese program is much more successful and systematic in its approach and doing well to reproduce and reintroduce the animals. But bottom line, these are very rare animals. They're fascinating, they give birth to live young, the list goes on. They're really cool, they like to spend time in shallow water and they like to lay on overhanging branches, which is what I've tried to recreate in this environment here. The thing that's tricky to get is that they do go through a winter cooling and it can get pretty cool in that environment. I have made several efforts to reproduce these animals by turning their heater off in the winter. Frankly, the heater was keeping and maintaining around 75 degrees Fahrenheit regardless, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. Because this is a basement unit, that would allow for the temperature to get a lot colder, but it wasn't sufficing, I guess. I also would turn off their basking light, but one thing I hadn't done properly was reduce a day and night cycle. So I am now hoping that for next year, if I am to also reduce the daylight hours, I'm going to have all heat lights off. There's the basking light and a small ceramic heat emitter that come on during the day. All of that will turn off during the day and hopefully that will help further stimulate the animals to brumate, go into sleeping dormant and will stimulate breeding for the spring. It's tough to say because as you may or may not know, there's videos up above here you can see, uh, Dr. Alec Brown has performed several ultrasounds on both of my females and it is clear that both of them seem to possess healthy follicle growth and size. The male I have never seen actually copulate with the females. I've seen him eagerly pursue them and almost pin them down and get into that uh, process. So it's safe to assume, but not certain, that when I'm not around, that behavior is still occurring and is probably successfully happening and not being interrupted by me walking by and startling them to disperse. So right now, the course of action is a little different than this year. This past year, unfortunately, we were not successful in breeding the animals. At least, usually they would have their babies in the fall. 
the female gestation period is quite a few months and usually she swells with offspring and they look really big. They give birth in the late fall. It has been documented that they can give birth in the spring. Sometimes it carries on through. So there is hope for that, but I'm doubtful. I'm skeptical that's gonna be the case. If I have any hopes it could happen, it'd be with Rexy. She is the much larger female looking at them both this year and how they, how big they are. Uh, but I still don't think it's gonna be the case. If you'd like to learn more about keeping Shinisaurus or join a community of experienced keepers, you should definitely check out the Shinisaurus Crocodilores page on Facebook. I am also going to monitor my cold room space using this Govi digital thermometer and hygrometer to graph out the temperature fluctuations in my cold room space. I'm fairly confident it never dips below 52 to 54 Fahrenheit, which would be perfect for this process. I am a little bit scared about the idea of potentially moving those animals into containers with a water dish and just leaving them in that space. I've spoken to a few breeders in Europe that suggested whenever possible, cooling the animals in their enclosure is the best option because they have access to water. If they wake up and need to drink, there's less chance they knock over a water dish and you miss it in a brumation container in the dark. There's just a lot more factors that can go wrong when they're not in a proper tank like this and if they're just like in a shoebox container with a water dish, if it dries up somehow, mold, etc., ventilation. So because of how few Shinisaurus are in Canada, we're talking maybe, to my knowledge, excluding the Toronto Zoo, I believe that there are somewhere in the ballpark between nine and 10 Shinisaurus in the country, and I have three of them. Their site is one which basically means that I'm not getting my hands on more of them. It'll be very, very, very hard, basically impossible. My friend that I got them from brought them in seven years ago, maybe more. It was right before they were listed as CITES Appendix 1. So they came in legally with paperwork, etc., from a breeder overseas. Yeah, you can't get them anymore, basically. It's very hard for a private breeder or owner to get these animals. Uh, so it's imperative that I collaborate and work with and, and make every effort to reproduce them if we want to see more Shinisaurus in Canada, because this is kind of all we got. But what can we do? We gotta just keep trying, be patient, and give them all the love and food they need to hopefully get it right one year. I think that this will make the difference. I am still toying with the idea of if these temps show right in the cold room, I've actually considered setting up a tank like this, but on a smaller scale and just having lights on and just keeping it super cold. Cause these animals are so rare and important. It needs to happen. It's important enough to make the investment and do it all right. All right, everybody. So we have a container and some night crawler worms that I bought today. And so before we offer them to the Shinisaurus, I just want to uh, take them out like so and put them in the container. And we're going to put a little bit of supplement on them. I really don't like doing this because the worms do squirm around when you do it. But it's important to offer the Shinisaurus supplements. He's already watching. He can see them in there. Yeah, buddy, those are going to be for you in a sec. All right, so we're going to take some of the calcium plus do that and I see that's what I mean I really don't like that that happens but we'll offer them now the Shinisaurus there you go buddy mm -mm -mm. oh yeah there you go there you go sir and it won't be long from here that probably one of the females is gonna come out now Look at their teeth, they actually have quite large teeth. Females are probably gonna see that. Ooh, ooh. slimy. I wanna eat as well. Not sure, Rexy was out here a second ago. Blech, that is nasty. All right, here's another one. Rexy over here somewhere. Not really sure where she's at. Oh, I spooked him. Maybe if I hold this here. Oh, there's my male again. Yeah, as you can see, he's not shy. He 
he's happy to eat. Okay, here's Rexy. Hopefully she actually comes out. Come on. Come on, girl. Don't you come. There you go. Although Shinisaurus have been documented consuming a wide variety of prey, it is undoubtedly the case that their favorite food are earthworms. Ugh, slime. Hey buddy, he's going for a swim. Oh, nasty, he's pooping. Now you understand why it's necessary that I do frequent water changes in this paludarium. Yeah, you can see here that Rexy is a lot bigger than the other female. So that's why I'm hopeful she could be gravid or pregnant, but I don't know. At this point, this late into the season, I'm really not sure what to think. I usually feed my Shinisaurus two times a week. They get fed heavy during those times, plenty of food is offered, with the exception of winter, where they don't eat for several months. And for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what are your suggestions on how I can get these animals into their proper dormancy period? We want to keep them low 50s Fahrenheit. You have suggestions on how I can do that in this basement, which ambiently sits around the low 60s anyways. I might go so far as opening a window. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give you a comment a heart, and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the community's contributions to suggestions. Now, the other thing is, going back to the video, it's weird. I know people that don't actually cool their Shinisaurus and they get babies every year. I'm not sure, I mean, I think that's going fine for them, so be it, but I don't know. That, that kind of worries me. Am I doing something wrong? Is this male here viable? Who knows what it is? Um, but I do think that the most important thing is doing things as naturally as possible for them. Even just the animals getting that rest period is important and I have heard for most people that is what stimulates them to breed. So we're gonna do it that way. We're gonna try and dial it in and get it right. All right guys, I wanted to come back and show you. Look at this. It appears that my female's actually out this time. Rexy was out the other day, but we never saw this girl. She's a lot shyer, but she's basking right now under her low watt basking bulb. And the male is shedding. He's got some shed on his feet. He's shedding his body. Look at all this vibrant red that's coming through now. Ooh, he looks great. Then you can see down here, this part of his body and his tail hasn't yet shed, but pretty awesome stuff. I just received my order of feeders and we got some big juicy hornworms. So I figured we'd try to offer this girl one since we didn't see her eat. Just got back from the gym here. So I'm wearing shorts in November. I guess if you're not from Canada, you wouldn't think that that's so shocking. Or I guess also if you're not Mike Titula, because <laughs> he wears shorts in the winter. Snow, rain, shine, that boy loves his shorts. I dusted this with some calcium. Let's go ahead and give it to her. Knowing this girl, she can be a bit nervous. Hopefully she goes for it. We'll see. You can tell she's interested. There you go. Good girl. Okay, we are running away with the meal. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, uh. <laughs> I guess she's worried about someone taking it from her. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's an aquatic lizard, guys. So much for calcium. I hope you got some of it on the head. If there wasn't much else left. You washed it all away in the water. I will say head on shinies look pretty funny. They have a little like googly face. <laughs> look at those teeth though. 
Ooh, that horn room is oozing. And I'm in a weird angle. It's stuck under that pothos root. Anyways, we'll let her keep eating. Now we gotta offer the male one, right? Cause it won't be fair otherwise. It's like a hornworm, sir. Here you go. Oof, well done. Are you also gonna run away with yours? No, oh, you can eat it there, I'm not gonna. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. He wants to eat out there in peace, so we'll leave him be. Looks like this girl's making some progress with her hornworm. Aren't you? I feel bad, I wanna try and give her a hand. I'm just gonna pull it out from... I'm gonna try and get it. There we go. That should be a lot easier to eat now. Mm, mm, mm. So there you go, now you got to see all the Shinisaurus. Well everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this Shinisaurus Crocodilurus Chinese Crocodile Lizard update. It's been a pleasure trying to update you and show you what's going on here with these animals. As I said, they're doing quite well, thankfully, and it's just a matter of getting them to reproduce. It's so important. You know, when you have pets, you don't need to be able to breed everything, but this is a project that just really needs to come to fruition and be successful. And I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to make sure it does. As I said, the animals are healthy, so I'm not concerned about anything I'm doing wrong. They're doing fine, but whatever it is, I'm just not dialing it in fully to get them to breed. I'm part of the Shinisaurus group on Facebook, and I think that they're a great community to be part of. If you're interested in learning more about these animals and have questions, I'm gonna converse with them, share the video there too, hopefully, and try and get some ideas of what they think I should do differently. Again, I appreciate you all taking time to hopefully answer today's question of the day, to get some ideas there. I also wanted to thank you guys for all the well wishes last week. I'm sorry that video was late. I got really sick, some kind of chest cold. You might even be able to still <clears throat> Hell, uh, I sound a little congested or weird in this video, but bear with me. I'll be back on my feet completely very soon and you won't even notice the difference. And I'll be back to that, uh, that, that normal voice you're used to hearing me have. But thanks again. It really meant a lot to have your support going through that. If you want to see more videos pertaining to these incredible animals, check out the playlist up above here. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you all next week for an upcoming video. And to my patrons, I wanna quickly thank you as well because you saw the sneak peek that I posted. Some pretty incredible frogs just arrived from Colombia. And whoo, they are hot. Just wait till you see. Take care, guys. Bye.